Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Monday, March 15th, the Ides of March, Decision Point episode. My name is Erin Swinlin, and I'm here with my father, Carl Swinlin, from DecisionPoint.com. And we are going to fill you in on the charts that are interesting us right now, look at a few calendar items, and get you all ready for the week ahead. So let's get right to it. How are you doing, Dad? I know it's pretty rainy. I'm doing good and uh, found something today that I am uh, excited about uh, telling everybody. It's really a big deal. Okay, well, we'll get to it then. <laughs> so we're going to start off with an overview of the SPY like we usually do, see what uh, conditions and trends are doing. We will talk about uh, calendar items. The, FMO, the FOMC is meeting and uh, we're going to get uh, some comments out of them on Wednesday. Quadruple rich, witching is coming up. We have a major silver cross warning that we're going to talk to you about. There's some issues going on with crypto that we think you should know about. We'll talk a little bit about valuations. I'm going to come in and talk about our sector overview and the, the sectors that I'm watching this week. And then finally, I will finish it with the diamond of the week. But I actually have a couple extra ones because I want to show you those as well. But let's go ahead and get right on into it. First, we'll look at the decision point sector scoreboard so we can see where the strength is and where it is not. Go forward here. So you can see at this point, we've got, um, we had neutral signals on discretionary and on- uh, Healthcare. Yep. And those disappeared uh, today, I believe. And we have still neutral signals on utilities and staples. They have started to make a move to the upside, but they had been pretty beat down. So it's taken some time for that 20 day EMA to reach the 50 day EMA. So that's kind of what we're waiting for on those two sectors, but I think they still look pretty good right now. So let's go look at some of these charts. I'm gonna, like I said, I'll start right off with a look at what's going on in the market. New all-time highs again. And you can see a really nice move here. We consolidated a little bit and now we've popped up to those new all-time highs. The PMO has now given us a buy signal, uh, which is great news. I've been concerned seeing this rally moving up with volume moving down, but today we're finally seeing a little bit of a turn on volume, a little bit higher to total volume. The VIX is very healthy, continues straight up. We are now in overbought territory though for the VIX on our inverted scale. The VIX we look at as a sentiment indicator and sentiment is contrarian. So we find it best to invert our VIX. And we're waiting now, you can't see that upper Bollinger Band but it is arriving here soon. Typically you get those moves and punctures of the upper band and then you should start looking for a uh, a move to the downside. But so far, it's looking pretty good. Obviously, investors feeling um, fairly good about the market given the low VIX reading that we currently have. But like I said, we may not get to that upper Bollinger Band. We didn't back here, and we are in that overbought territory. So it'll be really interesting to see how this uh, shakes out as we go into the week. But overall, you have to like the rising VIX, in this case, on our inverted scale. All those lower and lower numbers, uh, less and less volatility. So that's that's good news. We do have negative divergences popping up everywhere as we make these new highs. Um, I do tell people that you know we still could see these divergences nullified because we don't have tops on some of these like the OBV. So when we get that second top, then we'll have that for sure uh, look from comparing this top to that top, but currently you have to be a little concerned when you don't see that volume support going on in this negative divergence. All righty, I am going to look at the short-term indicators. I looked at these in our free trading room this morning. If you haven't signed up for the free trading room, you can just go to our homepage, sign up for a free email list. Uh, there's also, I think, a link right there to register for those free trading rooms that I do on Monday. So we did look at these in the trading room. And again, currently we do have negative divergences as we make new all-time highs. 
But the good news is that the Swinland trading oscillators are still rising. And typically they are pretty good indicators of market direction. So the trend is still up as are these indicators. We could see them turn and then we will end up with a, a solid negative divergence, if you will, but currently they are rising. And this is as of the close on these two. These two, the uh, percent of stocks above their 20 day EMA and PMO is rising. We don't have the update just yet. The, right. uh, the, uh, oh yeah, they're, they're getting overbought. So yes, I meant to mention that. Yeah. Absolutely, especially the STOB. And my sense is that the volume uh, readings are not quite as overbought as we've seen before, mainly because we've been watching that volume trailing off as we've been making uh, new highs, so. That is that. I will look really quickly at dollar, gold, and oil just to see what's going on. You can see the dollar has rallied a little bit, but hasn't given us a breakout like we had previously. But you can see the PMO has um, bottomed above its signal line. RSI is positive and not overbought. We could certainly see higher prices in the dollar, and it is uh, seeing it find support here on that 20 day EMA and then getting back above the confirmation line of this double bottom that we have. I have to say though, I'm not so certain how um, you know, accurate this is right now because we did end up with a drop below the confirmation line back here, but I, I'm gonna still give it, uh, give it some time here as far as a breakout. I'm gonna look at the gold one-year premium chart as we call it. So this is as of end of day. So gold is really that we're seeing a nice bounce off of this um, long-term, very strong support level. And it is managing to, to work its way up there, uh, despite the dollar even uh, gaining a little bit over the, the past couple of days. The PMO has turned up and we're getting very high discount rates. Now this is not as of today, but I suspect it's gonna be very similar. When you get these really high discounts, it sometimes can mark some uh, short, shorter term bottoms. So that's what we'd be keeping an eye on. So this looks great, but the problem is overhead resistance is pretty much right here with the 20 day EMA and this level right here from that bottom we had back in November, December. The thing is when we need to get, we need to see uh, it start selling at a premium. That I mean that shows that the sentiment is shifting to the positive and people being positive suddenly is not a big danger sign it's a plus sign people are it's, it shows that people have changed their attitude about the uh, the well say gold and uh that they'll probably follow with that for a while the problem with sentiment getting you know the holding on positive for, for too long and, and being really extreme, you know, high spikes in sentiment, uh, it can indicate that we're getting close to the top. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But right now, gold is just still not, it's still bleh. Yeah, exactly. The interesting thing is gold miners have uh, started to awaken we're finally getting a breakout uh, out of this declining trend channel. It's been in forever. We got above the 20 day EMA and this will be the third day now that we've been able to close above it, which you can see hasn't really been the case previously. And the technicals underneath are starting to improve as well for gold miners. So I'm thinking they're looking pretty interesting here, but the 50 and 200 day EMAs could pose very strong overhead resistance, but um, nice RSI now getting into positive territory. And of course, it's on a PMO buy signal currently. USO. Well, we're getting a little bit of a pullback here. I had um, put in a more accelerated rising bottoms trend line. It looks like that's coming into being contested a little bit. But overall, you can see that the rising trend in oil is really not over whatsoever. <laughs> so it was due for a bit of a pullback. Looks like we might get that. This is a pretty strong area of support, about $43 here for USO. 
and the RSI is somewhat overbought, but not, not quite. So I think this has been really constructive having the, this consolidation move basically sideways and it's, it's um, setting up nicely for a rebound, but might need a test back here to that 20 day EMA, put it right back on this particular rising trend line here. All righty, bonds, real close look, not doing so hot. Obviously yields are rising. It's putting a lot of pressure on bonds. We had a um, descending triangle here, which is a bearish pattern. We did get the breakdown from that. Got a little bit of, um, of an upside move today, about point, uh, looks like 0.6% uh, or so, but the PMO is still pointing downward. And you know, yields are still a problem at this point with them rising. What is your sense of, with yields, uh, Dad, as far as where you see them going? Are we? I'm, I'm going to cover that. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, I'm done. So perfect uh, segue over to you. <laughs> uh, before you leave, why don't you pull up the climax chart? Absolutely. I I, I haven't had a look at it yet. Then. <laughs> yeah. Today. Well, so no we climax. didn't really have any climax in today, uh, possibly new highs, but certainly not anywhere else. Okay. No. Hmm. And again, I, I like seeing that total volume turning back up, but we'll see how this gets, uh, you know, breaking to new all-time highs, and we did manage to hold on to that, I think is very interesting right now for the market. And the PMO buy signal, I mean, it's it's hard to, you know, take away from this rally. There's a lot going on that's good. We just have to be on our toes because of those negative divergences that we pointed out earlier in the program. So I am going to give it back to you and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the Fed and yields and interest rates and... Um, on a calendar this week, we have uh, FOMC meeting and the, the announcement will be made on Monday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday. Um, we're not expecting any any uh, interest rate increases or cuts. Just, uh, I'm not expecting any surprises from the Fed. Um, here's the yield chart. We've got, you know, it's really as of Friday. It, they made new highs. Uh, the today, the ten-year ticked back, but it's still at least at one point six or one or above one point six. So it's just a, still in an upward zigzag, and uh, maybe the Fed will move to do something about that. Uh, quadruple witching um, options expiration. We talk about this every quarter. That's coming up Friday. You notice that I have put asterisks above the the volume bars on those quarterly volume spikes. We usually expect the market to be quiet, low volatility towards the end on like Thursday, Friday, uh, at least. And uh, but but with very high volume, as you can see, that is the case now. That is not the only reason we get really high volume, as you can see. But with that is we do expect it to be high, and you shouldn't uh, interpret it as having any other meaning other than it's just uh, uh, options expiration and it's sort of meaningless in that regard. Bitcoin. I heard a story this morning that. Uh, India is considering outlaw uh, along trading, uh, mining, and owning cryptocurrencies. Uh, and I, they mentioned something about China in that as well. I didn't, uh, uh, I couldn't verify that, but I did find the story on India. But here's that's the problem with the cryptos, is that. Uh, they, the governments can pull the plug on that just overnight. And uh, it's uh, just keep that in mind if you're trading it, because it, the tide could turn violently uh, at any time. Uh, 
Okay, I was checking some of our DPA charts today, and we normally watch the Silver Cross Index for the S&P 500. Now, let me back up a little bit. We have we have a uh, a Golden Cross. It's always been known as the 50 EMA crossing up through the 200 EMA on a stock or an index, whatever. And I decided that it'd be great to have an uh, indicator and uh, which we call the Golden Cross Index, which summarizes, which tells us the percentage of stocks within a given index, the S&P 500 being our focus. And uh, we also have, we also track 20 moving average crossing up through the 50 uh, moving average, which is a more intermediate term indicator. And I created the golden, I'm sorry, the silver cross index to track that. So we normally watch the SP 500, but I pulled this chart up and it shows the uh, NASDAQ composite and the NYSE composite. And uh, we see we've got these uh, silver cross indexes are cr crashing on all these major indexes. Uh, now, I consider this to be a more um, scary drop than say this and this, although we did get a nice uh, pullback on this divergence, but it's so far apart and the, in the up into the price top, the uh, Silver Cross Index was maintaining at least flat. But if you look, you know, oh, and let me just say, before this top, notice there was no divergence. Every, all these were going up into higher time. Well, we did have a divergence here, but hmm. <laughs> but they, uh, so you get this is a confirmation, and it's not telling you anything about the top, but. Uh, this was really one of the most uh, striking divergences. We had a higher price top and this sharp drop uh, in the uh, Silver Cross Index. And notice that we had that on all three of these major indexes. And once again, we have it again now. And it's no guarantee, but this is uh, like, okay, it's a tornado warning. <laughs> Maybe it's not going to hit your house, but this is time to uh, be, be on the alert. Uh, I consider this a, a really a major issue. Uh, could, it could uh, dissolve over the next week or two. We'll see. But right now, it's really a major concern to me. I can have to agree with you there. Okay, and the, I got something in the way here. The next one I wanted to cover was valuations. Um, notice, first of all, we've got this huge parabolic building in the month on the monthly chart. And uh, not, this is nothing new, We've, we keep mentioning it, but this is a really major concern is getting vertical uh, and it's a a big problem. Okay, fundamentals. We've got price going through the roof, as well as the PE ratio. This is as high as it's been for years. I think the only comparable uh, uh, reading, and it was actually higher, was back at the 2000 top. Mm. And uh, this is just you know, ridiculous. It's twice as high as it needs to be just to be normally overvalued. It's a um, I, I suggest that you go th to the Husband um, website, husbandfunds.com, and his latest article. He does um, quite a bit on valuations. And I'll just quote one short paragraph here. Uh, quote, our, by our most reliable measures, 
run-of-the-mill historical valuation norms are roughly 70% below current levels. And then he said, I know you don't want to believe that. <laughs> so yeah, the article is called How to Spot a Bubble, uh, as if we didn't know. <laughs> um, um, but let me go back to the, the to the uh, chart I had. I, so I, I apologize, I got myself a little mixed up here. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Yeah. This is really important though, to, to demonstrate. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he said, violation norms yeah. are roughly 70% below current levels. 70% is all the way down there. Right. That's, you know, the two, <laughs> you know, it's, read it and weep. Right. It's just getting so strange in this market, though. I mean, we have ETFs, so those are, you know, adding with the buy. Now we've got meme stocks and people involved in the market that have never been involved in the market. Just seems, and then with the, the stimulus checks, you keep talking about how money from that is going to be flowing into the market. I mean, I'm sure that that's causing part of the problem here. Um, yeah, the thing is, we really don't know how that's all going to turn out. Now, if you watch the uh, financial shows, they have nothing but bulls, one after the other, bulls, bulls, bulls. And, you know, you would think <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to stop, but it's going to one of these days. And I'm just saying, keep in mind, it's not as brilliant uh, as these people like to paint it. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's easy to be a bull because you winning most of the time, but when you're losing, bam, it's, it's devastating. Yep, usually fast. Okay, I think that-, that All righty. Uh, okay, let's see here. Let me get my charts up here. So I'm gonna just take a quick peek at uh, some of the sectors. I have my candle glance set up here so that we can look at the sectors all on the one chart, which I love. So it just gives you an idea momentum wise where the momentum is, where it's leaving, where it's coming and going. So you can see energy and financials. We've been on a really nice run here. Momentum is still moving upward on these. Starting to see a little bit of a turn here on energy, which is, you know, it's neat. it needs a bit of a, a pullback there. Uh, and then you have staples really started to shine here. And you can see that utilities also. So these were some of the areas I was looking at last week. And then the end of last week, I noticed that real estate was just looking great. You know, had a nice V bottom. It had already retraced about a third of the way up, actually most of the way up. And you had that uh, buy signal. So that's kind of where I'm concentrating uh, this week is looking in real estate. I mean, it is a runner. It's done a lot of its run. However, I just noticed that the, you know, the PMO is still moving straight upward and, you know, you've still got, it's not overbought yet. But let's go ahead and I'm going to zero in a little bit more. Here we go. So this is our sector chart. You can see these chart lists um, as a subscriber to decisionpoint.com. Part of what you get it, are these uh, sector charts in our sector chart list. So when I was looking at this on Friday, you know, I could see that we had just gotten this positive crossover on the BPI. We were already seeing the PMO turning up, and you know, now we're seeing a lot of participation. This one worries me just a little bit. I have to say, when you see 100% of all of the stocks in the real estate sector have price above their 20-day EMAs. That is rather overbought. Uh, but you can see that even in the intermediate term, we're starting to see that participation picking up. And the silver cross, well, it had turned up. It looks like it might be on its way to a positive crossover. So this was a, a sector that I was watching going into this week. And so consequently, I do have a diamond from that area for our diamond of the week. But there are two others that I want to share with you as well. So this is in that 
uh, real estate uh, sector. And you can see as far as what's going on in this industry group, it's been performing pretty much the same as the SPY, but you can see that EQIX is now starting to outperform the S&P and it's also beginning to outperform its industry group as well. Um, it is beat down. So you have to be aware of that. The 50 is below the 200 uh, and you've got a very low scooter. So this is kind of your bottom fish here. And we're going off the fact that this sector is gaining strength. So what I noted here is we did get above that 20. We have a 20, uh, five day, 20 day EMA positive crossover on the way. Uh, PMO buy signal, the RSI just went positive. So this is my diamond of the week is EQIX. But I did want to bring um, SunPower in. And full disclosure, I do own this one now. Uh, you know, solar renewable energy had pulled back quite a bit. You can see the double top. It executed. We got just about to that minimum downside target. Now we're looking at double bottom. Now we have the price finally above the 20 and the 50. We have not seen that since before the decline. The momentum is now shifting upward and the RSI is now positive. Uh, you can see that the group itself has started to improve and this one, SunPower, is outperforming both the S&P and it's trending upward in terms of its group as well. So I'm really... I think that sun power, a lot of the renewable energy space, you're going to see uh, what looks like a, a, we're coming out of something, but we haven't actually executed that double bottom. So you need to be aware of that. And then finally, I'm going to finish with gambling, uh, gaming ETF. Gambling stocks are really starting to pop right now going into the spring and the summer. And you can see the outperformance by the gaming ETF that's really been going on since the end of January. So I think that this one looks pretty good. It is on the overbought side, and that's something to be aware of. Even the PMO is a little on the overbought side. But you can see that whipsaw that we got here, and it's heading higher. So I do like this one quite a bit. So take a peek in that uh, gaming area. You might find some interesting stocks there. Like I said, I think renewable energy is improving, and EQIX, the diamond of the week. That's all we got and we wish you happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.